let's talk about Miles Turner, who's one of my all-time favorite NBA players as a Pacers fan, and whose offensive development I think is really interesting. Nice yoga pose. Remember that that one summer that, that Miles Turner did yoga and it fixed all of his problems? But yeah, he is coming off of a career-best offensive season in 22-23, uh, which is awesome because this is something that, like, 17-year-old me would have would have would have preyed on. The threes are a real thing now. And this isn't like a this season development, but it's hu- it's been huge in opening up his offense. I believe this is like his second career high shooting percentage this year. We'll look at it in a second, but Miles is routinely spotting up from a couple feet beyond the NBA line and cashing from out there. The Pacers are even running him off some like twirl actions where he's getting like uh, a screen like a wing and he's firing into a movement three really really impressively and miles and miles is incorporated in this rick carlisle offense which is an absolute godsend for him in, in really interesting ways they have him ghosting into threes as like guards in in years past have done for the pacers this is really impressive stuff this year miles shot 37.3 percent from three he's been stuck around four threes a game for the last four years of his career which I think is of course always going to be a next step for him how much more can we improve on this three-point volume and the numbers as a whole are so impressive now had career highs this year in true shooting as well as relative true shooting which just adjusts it to the league average his free throw rate is the highest it's ever been he actually, like, his, his three-point attempt rate is is way down, but I think that's in part due to his increased driving game, which we'll talk about a little bit later. The usage, again, the high, his highest usage rate of his career. Um, overall, it's really, really good stuff. But this is a far cry from Miles Turner of five years ago, who the only thing that he did in Nate McMillan's Pacer-led offense was pop to 20 feet and shoot mid-range jumpers. And I and I am a Nate McMillan guy. I am a Nate McMillan apologist, but he just did not let Miles cook, and this was all Miles Turner did. And he's still a mid-range assassin, always has been, and probably always will be. This is incorporated into his offense still today. Um, you know, he'll still pop into that, like, mid-range area, but a lot of his pick and pops that otherwise would have been floating to 20 feet... He simply just pops to three and pops a little bit behind the three-point line and is able to comfortably hit those. And that is still an important counter for him, being able to sit into empty space in these pick and rolls and to hit a little 10-foot jumper. It always is going to be a great counter for Miles. But just looking at all of the different ways that he scores now, um, you can see the incredible touch. His touch has always been really special. Like, that's nothing new. For Miles being like a special touch scorer in basically every way, but he is still. If we look at where is he now? Because I'm, he's one of the top mid-range shooters in the league. Um, again, smoking 53.7 percent outside of five feet, um, but his volume on those is definitely down. The threes are great. He's great at the rim now. Um, all over, his scoring has just been so efficient. And if we compare, this is 2023 Miles Turner who took 48 mid-range jumpers this season, compared to 2018-19 Miles Turner, who took 245 mid-range jumpers, which is insane. And we look at these driving play types, which are a decent indicator of like self-creation. We see not a ton. And if we look at the same play types five seasons later, we see his volume has definitely increased. Still not incredibly, but definitely a decent amount. And some of the handling skill that he flashed as a young player has really combined with his touch to be a more consistent thing. He can hit these DHO keeps, beautiful little show and go. In this more like pacey, spacey Rick Carlisle offense, he's an effective drill handoff operator at this point. Can fake the handoff to Buddy Heald, get into Gafford's shoulders, beautiful little show hook shot his touch in that mid-range five to eight feet area has always been elite it is still elite he's one of the best touch hook guys in the league just look how fast miles turner is he's always been a pretty coordinated mover guy for a big man but he really does dribble like he's six foot seven at times and the way he's he can explode into dunks and drives off of 
close out attacking is great. And because he is a threat to shoot threes off of the dribble, the closeouts are great. His finishing as a whole has really improved um, straight at the rim. If we go and look at his finishing numbers over the year, especially if we look in, in you know zero to three feet, over the last three seasons or so, he's made big improvements, the last two especially. And I think strength development has definitely happened for him. The frame and strength stuff is still an issue and probably always will be. But he's absorbing contact from strong defenders like Aaron Gordon in midair and, and finishing really impressively, which has led Turner to, of course, become a great finisher. This is a great example of his three-point gravity, two defenders jump at miles and shot clock, and he's able to poster, eh, kind of poster, uh, Jaden McDaniels. He didn't, it wasn't really a poster because he didn't jump. But point being, the fluidity attacking closeouts, the weird touch creation scoring, like ridiculous finger roll high off the glass using his handle and a little bit of like off arm work to get past Anthony Edwards float it over Rudy Gobert like this is really interesting seven footer creation stuff and in a ma in like a matchup that killed him as a as like a young player and as a rookie and as a sophomore he's so much better posting up switches being patient using his strength and beautiful little running hook that's his shot and he's one of the best in the game at those little running hooks he has been basically for the last five or six years and he will continue to be probably the the touch and like craft finishing is so good um and it really does make up for a lot of his vertical limitations he does not get off the ground very much ever on these finishes and that's kind of always going to be his main limitation as a driver as a finisher but look at him use his shoulder inside hand to kind of push off and create space before scooping that ball in. It's really impressive stuff, and it's just very fun to watch. But as I mentioned, the strength and like the, the verticality always going to be a bit of an issue. Um, it's hard to rely on that kind of stuff, especially against better and stronger and bigger defenders. And it does lead him to get blocked a bit more than most seven-footers when he's vulnerable to these, like, impressive vertical contests at the rim. And I don't think that's, like, offensive role. A lot of the times he plays like a wing, especially with other bigs on the floor. Like, he can be a guy who has Jalen Smith running DHO cuts, and he's going to slip back door just like a wing or a guard would in this Rick Carlisle offense. Now, the passing is the other thing. Uh, this is this is um, a nice little throwback where, what was I, like 18 or 17? I wrote about Miles Turner for 8.9 seconds. Um, I wrote about his scoring and his handling skill development where I was probably a little optimistic, but I think I was correct in assuming that there is more in, there was more to his flashes and that there was something more. And there was something more. Thank you, Rick Carlisle. Um, I was also a little bit optimistic on his passing, probably too much so, but a lot of the concerns that I outlined here were kind of the same as they are now, um, where Miles isn't reading the defense, he has a lot of rookie turnovers, and he's 20, he's 27, 28 now. Um, there are some, you know, some moments where he's okay. I don't think he's a terrible passer, like he can hit a simple empty corner short roll for three. Like, that's a very, very easy read that almost every center makes. And he can hit pretty simple stationary passes to cutters for layup assists. But he makes more, quote-unquote, rookie mistakes than he should still at this point in his career. I love his ability to handle in the passing position here and pivot, but he doesn't read Fred Van, Fred Van Vliet coming in from the weak side. This pass is a little bit too far out in front of Buddy and that is a steal. Again, even on these like simple flow of offense passes, Miles isn't reading. He like the the first read in, in the offense here is to hit Buddy Heald curling towards the middle, but Miles isn't super aware of the congestion in this area and and, and J Mac all over this ends up turning the ball over. But that's not to say that things haven't improved. And I went back and watched or like looked at some of my clips from 2019, 2018, and like the spacing difference is hilarious. Like with without Sabonis and you know with with Carlisle's offense having Turner cut right into Sabonis's space, um, running hook into the middle there, 
or we have Turner in the post this time, and they have Sabonis cut to the opposite block and, and, and muck this up. It's it's really funny to see how not only Turner has evolved, but also the Pacers' offense. And I think, obviously, Carlisle's system and the more like high-paced, fast-paced offense was always going to better suit Miles, and it certainly has over the last two seasons especially, where his offensive growth has been really significant. But I think the driving creation expansion this season has been really cool and impressive to see. And Miles, at this point, is about as good of a complementary offensive center as you're going to find. He's not a star or anything, but he is an elite spacer for a big man, only hampered by the somewhat limited three-point volume, who can legitimately attack off of the dribble, create, and score with efficiency basically everywhere on the floor. He's great at the rim. He's great in the mid-range. He's great from three. Um, I'm so excited to see Miles next year with the, the new look-ish Pacers, see how he plays with Jarris and, and Bruce Brown and how he continues to develop with Halliburton and Emhart. Uh, Miles is, is the best. I, I love him so much, and I'm so happy to see him thriving.